In this lesson, we will discuss symbolic interactionism, a micro-level theoretical orientation in sociology. In symbolic interactionism, the main premise of the theory is that human beings live in a world of meaningful objects. According to this theory, the meaning of those objects are given by human beings themselves. So the theory essentially argues that people create a world of shared meaning. Now if we look at the component words of the theory, symbolic interactionism, and we break this down into symbols and interactions, we can get a more proper and appropriate sense of how the theory understands the world as being built up through a series of symbolic interactions that create this world of meaningful objects. The objects for symbolic interactionists may include material things, but also includes other people, relationships, patterns of communication, and other symbols that exist in the world. Now symbolic interactionist theory can be somewhat abstract at first, but we're going to try to make it more concrete through our continued discussion of those two component words of the theory, symbols and interaction. Let's first start with the word symbol. Now, a symbol is a representation of one thing for another thing. And according to symbolic interactionists, the world that we live in is a nonstop series of symbols and meanings of things that represent one thing while proxying for another thing. The basic building block of understanding symbolic interactionism is to begin with the idea of language. And so we can see the process of symbolic interactionism generating and building up over time if we think about the fundamental process of learning language and language acquisition. So let's start there. If you've ever been around a child who is just beginning to learn language, you might recognize that oftentimes when children are young between the ages of two and a half to five, they will frequently ask the question, what's that? What's that? What's that? A couple years ago when my daughter was in this age frame, she would ask me repeatedly, Mama, what's that? Mama, what's that? And I, as a already socialized individual in society, would respond to her and tell her what the item was that she was asking about. Now let's take for example that my daughter saw a green car passing down the road and she stopped and asked me, Mama, what's that? So here we have my daughter's green car driving by and she's asked me, Mama, what's that? And I answer her, that's a green car. Now really two pieces of information have been given to my daughter, two symbols. The first is the color green and the second is the physical item, the car. Now when I tell her that that's a green car, she accepts that knowledge both of the color and of the material item and she internalizes it and can take that with her to new situations. She's internalized that through our interaction. So she asked me a question, Mama, what's that? And I told her, that's a green car. And that interaction had the effect of transferring two symbols to her. So she accepted both the color green and the item green car as a material object. Now, what happens when she internalizes that and accepts the reality that I've given her, that that particular color and shade is green and that that material item is a car, is that she internalizes that and she accepts those things as being real. Now, symbolic interactionists argue that when she goes into new situations, because she's internalized that that is a green car, that she will recognize that a, the color green and the item a car, are, a car are still valid and real, even if it's not the same literal green car that's driving by. So she could go to school or daycare a week after this symbolic interaction that we've had and a different green car could go by and she would still recognize that that is the color green and that that is the item car because she has internalized an abstraction of the color and the item and she did this through our symbolic interaction so she accepted the reality that that was the color green and that was the item of a car now symbolic interactionists argue that this sort of process of transferring knowledge from one person in society to another happens an endless number of times and that's how we build that world of shared meaning is that some people in society tell others what particular items are and then the 
meaning of society builds up over time. People accept that as real and that's how we create society together. Another aspect of symbolic interactionism, however, is focusing on the process of how these meanings emerge and build up over time to create shared institutions of family, government, education, etc. And so in the example of my daughter in the green car, I literally transferred her information in our symbolic interaction. But symbolic interactions can also be negotiations where people don't necessarily agree on the meaning. So she accepted the meaning readily that I gave her and she accepted that I wasn't playing some you know, surreal mind game with her and trying to give her inaccurate information. She just accepted that as valid. But sometimes our interactions don't go that way. So if you've ever, ever tried to date somebody romantically, which most people have at some point in their life, you have experienced likely a negotiated symbolic interaction. You get to a point in the courtship process where you don't agree on something. You don't agree that you're supposed to call your partner as soon as you get off from work. They want you to call them immediately and you have have a symbolic interaction but it's not a smooth transfer of knowledge instead it's a negotiation what is the future of this relationship going to be how are we going to interact you're trying to come to a shared meaning and create a shared meaning or shared reality and symbolic interactionists are interested in both that transfer of knowledge through symbolic interactions and also that process of negotiation and you can see how that process of negotiation can happen in intimate relationships, but also how that could build up for larger institutions over time. So nations will often engage in a symbolic negotiation of trying to decide what democracy should be or how governments and economies should be run. And they might engage in a war, which is essentially an elongated and elaborated series of symbolic interactions to try to come to a shared meaning. Now, symbolic interactionism is what we call a micro-level theory in sociology. That means that it looks at society as being built from the ground up. And you can really understand this through that, again, basic level of symbols and interactions. That the interactions that we have build meaning for our lives together as subcultures, families, nations, and other institutions. And it's sort of a mushroom or mushrooming or billowing effect that generates an entire society based on these same component processes of symbols and interactions. An element or a part of symbolic interactionism is called interpretive sociology. Interpretive sociology is a perspective based on the idea that a sociological understanding of behavior must include the meaning that people give to what they do. Because symbolic interactionism is focused on that process of how meanings emerge through symbolic interactions, interpretive sociology and, and symbolic interactionism dovetail quite well together. They, they build on each other and work together to try to focus on that process or idea of making meaning. In this lesson, we covered the basic idea and components of symbolic interactionism theory a micro-level orientation in sociology.